But they begged for this. And I'm going to show you that. They begged for this in Houston. In our ongoing series, Breaking Bond, we've been telling you how judges are freeing repeat violent offenders from jail by granting them multiple felony bonds or personal recognizance bond. It's cost more than 130 Harris County residents their lives. Tonight, we're going to tell you which judges granted bonds to the most. This was a few years ago. Is that so not enough to stop it? In a year and a half. Violent felons out on bond just in this one county, Harris County, Houston, killed 130-something people in a year and a half. And they, they wonder how this dude who carved his wife's brain out of her head and carved her heart out of her chest in front of their eight-year-old daughter got a bond. 130 Harris County residents, their lives. Tonight, we're going to tell you which judges granted bonds to the most defendants who are now murder suspects. Fox 26's Randy Wallace joining us live now from Southwest Houston. Randy. If a decision you made may have cost another person their life, would you at least feel like you owe some sort of an explanation? If your answer is yes, you're obviously not a Harris County Criminal District Court judge. They apparently feel like they owe none of us an explanation. The 138 Harris County residents who died due to the courthouse revolving door include an 83-year-old grandmother, three police officers, and three unborn children. Sadly, the in there. 138 victims of felony bond reform. Oh, yeah, there's a whole lot of gliders in there. You think uh, a lot of these uh, kill, uh, these dudes have been released to go kill again are gliders? I would say some. Yes, yeah, some. I would, are, wager, I would I think, wager some are. I would. I would say. I would say about um, ten percent, or ten percent, up or or eight, maybe eight percent, eight percent. Harris County is Texas, so I would say about eight percent of color and minorities even though there's no court order mandating it newly elected criminal district court judges took it upon themselves to grant bond to almost all defendants appearing before them no matter how lengthy their criminal history we've seen defendants on five seven eight ten twelve fourteen bonds that you never saw ever fourteen bonds so that means you've com you committed fourteen acts after another, after another, after another, and they keep giving you bonds. That's Definitely why, glider. That's why that brother was out, is out on bond. He literally carved, he cut her head open and pulled her brain out in front of his eight-year-old daughter to send a message and cut her heart out, and the judge let him out. The 138 victims of felony bond reform are just the ones we are aware of. Keep in mind, you got hundreds and th of murders that haven't been solved. So we know this is kind of a lowball number. Here's the criteria for our research. The defendant turned alleged killer had to be free on multiple felony bonds. So what do you a think? Burritos. Yeah, a lot of on burritos. But yeah, uh, I would say about 8% Gladys because it's, it's, it's a lot of on burritos though and a lot of sons. Here's the criteria for our research. The defendant turned alleged killer had to be free on multiple felony bonds or a felony personal recognizance bond. The district court judge with the most got, defendants like, freed multiple, on bond the same person on here multiple times. Is yeah. 182nd Dependent. judge Danny Lacayo with 10. They include 41. This motherfucker has let out 10. This one judge has let out 10 motherfuckers who have killed people. Darge is 182nd Judge Danny Lacayo. In the last year and a half. With 10. They include 41-year-old. He got, this judge got more bodies. <laughs> this judge got more bodies than a serial killer. This is not over the course of his career. This is in the last year and a half. Charge is 182nd stupid. Judge Danny Lacayo with 10. They include 41 year old Johnny Zemano. But when it hits home, it's an unbearable pain. Say hi to mama. Say hi, mama. 
six-month-old Jewel will never know her 30-year-old mother, Delisha Liam Blate. Her mother, Alicia Perez, blames Zamino and Judge Lacayo. She'd be here taking care of her children like I wanted her to raise her own children. Second place is a tie. 262nd Judge Lori Chambers Gray and 230th Judge Chris Morton, both with nine defendants they repeatedly freed on bond who are now charged with murder. Judge. <laughs> All right, the sisters have entered the chat. <laughs> but yeah, so these two got nine. They second place, man. Second place. Think about it. Both these people have nine But Yo, that's your body. If you letting these guys out multiple times, listen to what he said. They've let the people out, mo not just once. The people who have killed have been let out multiple times. Children. Second place is a tie. 262nd Judge Lori Chambers Gray and 230th Judge Chris Morton, both with nine defendants they repeatedly freed on bond who are now charged with murder. Judge Lori Chambers Gray repeatedly freed 28-year-old Darian Carraway, now accused of killing 46-year-old Patrick Aikens. His sister, Teresa Seck, blames Judge Gray. And because of her decision, my brother had to pay with his life and us as a family, we have to deal with the aftermath of that and that pain. 230th Judge Chris Morton gave 30-year-old Jesus Gallegos five bonds in just a one-year period. Now Gallegos... <laughs> that one, he gave this guy... Look at his nose. You wouldn't get... Just, just looking at his nose, you don't get this guy five bonds in one year. I mean, he got arrested, got a bond, got rearrested, 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 got a bond, and then killed somebody. No, 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 no. If the some people get bonds, <laughs> we get bonds too, too. <laughs> yeah, man. This is this is for all the wicked haters, man. You see how in Spanish they on burritos do it too, on man. Burritos do it too. Two thirty of Judge Chris Morton gave thirty year old Jesus Gallegos five bonds in just a one year period. Now, Guy Agos is accused of murdering his 43-year-old girlfriend, Rita Acosta. He's dating that. She left a beautiful family behind. Of course, man. And then they wonder, and they wonder why men is, is, should should be the prize. Of course, my man with the, the lazy nostrils got that. Damn. None of yeah, she, she, yeah, and she, and, and she friend zoned a, a doctor. She probably friend zoned a lawyer. She probably friend zoned a dude who owned his own construction company and choked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I figured he got that by getting punched in the face. Oh, yeah. Right. He's, he's a bad dude, man. Somebody probably hit him in the face with a weight. Like, you don't get that from getting punched. Well, I mean, some people can punch you and do that. This guy goes five bonds in just a one-year period. Now Guy Agos is accused of murdering his 43-year-old girlfriend, Rita Acosta. She left a beautiful family behind Coming in third, 180th Judge Deshaun Jones. He repeatedly freed eight defendants, now accused of murder. Jones. So he's the third. So listen, man. This is these are murder. These people are murderers. Yeah, they definitely have blood on their hands. Repeatedly. It's not just you replace the person one time. It's you repeat. These are people that have been re repeatedly. Like you remember the old days, the judge, in, in, at least in the movies, but I've I seen this in real life. The judge say, man, don't let me see you back in my courtroom. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Look, look say your bond has been revoked. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like, man, I, I'll let you go this time. But if I ever see you back in this courtroom, man, your ass is grabbed. Jones gave Teresa Balboa a PR or get out of jail free card. She's now accused of killing six year old Samuel Olson. Shit. I have contacted all of these judges more times than I can count. If any of you want to respond on camera, you know how to reach me. Rep Salute the verdant glider, man. Um, shit, man. I mean, this is, and this is what, this is what some people. Some people don't know what's going on. They talk a lot on Twitter, but they because they're acting like this woman's case is the first case where this has happened. They're really? acting like this is this is because black women are the least protected. 
Yeah, not only that, but they also believe that the only people who qualify for these fucking, you know, bonds or gliders for the most part, they're exactly. like, I mean, they live in a world where, you know, delusion doesn't quite cut it. No, it doesn't, it doesn't fully capture it. Shout out to Nate Ways, man, Op Nation Hall of Famer, man. He says he gifted 10 Op Nation memberships. That's big, man. Nate Ways in a Nate building, Ways is a real one. Yeah, Nate Ways, man, he's Mount Rushmore, man. Um, so this this is this guy. Look at this. Look at what look at this. the most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. And the person that calls 911 the most is the black woman. Oh yeah, and the person that protested hardest to get the police defunded, which led to all this shit and criminal justice reform is the black woman and all they're also the same group that has the highest per capita violent crime rate among women and they voted democrat the highest 97 percent no other group votes for one party more than 60 percent they vote 97 percent right. well the only reason that the, yeah. are the most the most all of the above is because they're proximal Oh, these, yeah, yeah, true indeed, yeah. true indeed. The, the reason that they're the most disrespected and yada, 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 yada is because they're, they're with the brothers. Fucking facts, man. This shit where it's like, oh, yeah, they're at the, they're suffering at the hands of gliders and they're, they're weak and vulnerable to gliders. It's the biggest fucking cope and lie. Yeah. The question like was, the, the, the new movie, what? you seen the trailer for the magical Negroes? <laughs> yeah. Right. That's yo, the that's what they're going for. Yo, I, it doesn't it doesn't earlier. matter what the de- it don't matter what the demographic is, Chief. It does not matter. It is proximity to well, you know. <sighs> Let's hear what the family has to say. Her family. And after he talked took all these pills, she said he turned into a lunatic and started stabbing him. He drug her body into their bathroom after the cops started coming in the house and stabbed himself a couple of times. I asked the, the, the guy that had the body because he told us that she couldn't be um, embalmed because he messed up all the arteries well, when I got the pictures, my daughter was like sliced like you would do an animal. He took half of her her scalp off, and I mean, must be that Cherokee blood. When they say stabbed <laughs> several times, that pisses me off because I seen what he did, and after mm-hmm. he talked. Mm. So yeah, man. Um, everyone's upset about this. Um, justice for Robin Simpson. Um, okay. As the advocate, ally, and activist that I am on all things kinfolk, I wanted to update the people on Robin Simpson. Um, so apparently in Houston, uh, Robin Simpson called nine one one. Um, about her husband running through the house chasing her with a knife and saying that, you know, he was being very aggressive. They had gotten into an argument. He was saying that he wanted to kill himself. Mind you, they have an eight-year-old daughter who was also in the house. Um, And the first police officer showed up. This is in Houston. The first police officer showed up. But right when he showed up, Robin's phone hung up. um, And he decided to wait outside of the house until his a partner or backup, whatever, arrived. By the time they got into the house, Robin's husband had stabbed her over a hundred times. Um, he cut her heart out her chest. He scalped her. Um, scalped her, peeled her skull back, started taking her brain out. Um, and then he also started stabbing himself in front of their eight-year-old daughter. So 
So the issue now comes that the Houston Police Department um, arrested him for murder and aggravated assault um, on the count of their eight-year-old daughter. But he's up for bail, three hundred forty thousand. You know, you only have to pay ten percent of that. Um, and so now, uh, Robin's family, they're they have a petition going around uh, to get his bond denied because you know this was an extremely gruesome crime. In Houston, you can butcher and, someone uh, like a hog and have their blood all over you, guts everywhere, and their brains in your hand, and still get a fucking bond. And this is what they add because here's the thing. They demanded this. It wasn't even an ask. Them sisters demanded this. It was just three years ago, too. It wasn't like oh, 20 years ago. So it's like, there's no way they can deny it. We got all the footage. We got all the uh, sisters saved the country. Remember, they saved the country yeah. by getting Biden and you know, right. all this shit. Yo, this really puts that whole careful what you wish for into perspective. Definitely, man. Definitely. We begin tonight at 9 with a breaking bond report that just may be hard to believe. A teen charged with murder violated his bond conditions more than three dozen times. And he's now accused of shooting at a 17-year-old girl. Fox 26's Randy Wallace joining us live Smash. on his exclusive ongoing series. Yeah, Rashi, we first told you about Corey Hodge back in June. The 18-year-old could be a poster guy for breaking bond, and police just keep finding more victims. These are my personal journals that I write to my son each day to cope with what I'm going through. Stacy Langham's 18-year-old son, Diego, will never read what she writes or hear her voice. Police say 18-year-old Corey Hodge killed Diego Langham and shot and wounded his friend on April 17th of last year. I immediately thought Harris County was to blame because he shouldn't have even been out to even commit that crime. So they're the ones to blame. Langham has every right to blame the revolving door at the Harris County Criminal Courthouse. Hodge's alleged shooting crime spree began when he was 15. For shooting one of his neighbors. So why was he even allowed to be walking the streets of Houston? On July 12th of last year, just four months after he allegedly murdered Diego Langham, police say Hodge shot and wounded another man. Last October, he posted bonds totaling $370,000 and was a free man. His bond conditions included a GPS monitor and 24-hour home confinement. You're supposed to be on a GPS. Yeah, you can't keep the sun man down, though. For our house arrest. None of that happened. And all of this happened within days and weeks of getting out on bond. According to a bond condition violation report, Hodge violated his house arrest condition at least 37 times. But it took more than a month for anything to happen. And I feel as though that's why a lot of these criminals are doing what they're doing, because... There's no punishment. A few days ago, Hodge was charged again with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Police say back on May 1st, he and another teen shot a 17-year-old female at this apartment complex in the 2800 block of South Derry, Ashford. Hodge is now behind bars with no bond set. As far as Stacey Langham is concerned, that's where he needs to stay. He didn't just murder my son. He murdered an entire family because it hurts each day we have to wake up and my son's physically not here. Now, in addition to posting pictures of himself on social media holding a gun, Hodge posted a song he wrote about killing Diego Langham. Reporting live in the Southwest side, Randy Wallace. <laughs> Wall out on bond. But, but he posted the song Wall Out on Bond right. for another murder. God. Wall double violating down, double down wall every time. Yeah, but while violating that bond 37 times, he still posted a song about killing the guy who he was out on bond for killing. That's different. <laughs> Even though he killed all of those people, his family still put up money to get him out on that three hundred thousand yeah, dollars. 300. <laughs> I thought his bonds totaled three hundred thousand, right? But but we so poor, and you know, we we don't have any. Does that mean they had to put up thirty? 
like how much did they have to pay in total? Was it three hundred grand? At least ten percent, so at least thirty nine thousand. Yeah. Because I think it was okay, that, yeah, that's what I was moms. wondering. You got multiple bonds, though. It's not like just one. You got multiple bonds for violent crimes. Right. So that's um, why I thought that that three grand, three hundred grand figure might be accurate. Yeah. It's 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 just man. It's just sad, man. It's it's really hard to fathom how how, how like emboldening people. Like this is worse than emboldening people. What that guy just did. It's worse than involved. You can't even, you can't even, like, he posted the song admitting to killing the guy who he was out on bond for killing while simultaneously violating the bond conditions 37 different times. Hey, yo, man. Rap. It's uh, art, you know? Could it, didn't, didn't mean anything. Look at the Thugger case. And here you go, you got these idiots. This is 15 days and 13 days ago in Houston. Action, action, action. We sent so many petitions and support letters for their parole. We almost, just like two or three, shut down their DOC website. Action, people. Get your family back. As we reflect on the impassioned words from the panelists there, the organizers of Rock Nation's Social Justice Coalition Summit want everyone to carry this torch of hope beyond the summit's confines. According to them, it is not enough to be mere spectators in the theater of justice. We must become active participants, driving meaningful change within our communities and beyond. I've studied almost every problem in the world. I've never met a problem that couldn't be impacted positively by more self-love, by more self-awareness of your brilliance, and more understanding of where we've come from. And I think as a black community, we need to A, do that, and then B, be vocal and verbal about it. And what do you want people who participate in this summit to walk away with? Mm. I want them to walk away with the idea that they're not alone. They sat shoulder to shoulder with someone today who is thinking about these issues, who's concerned about them, who may have a different means to an end goal, but the end goal is the same nonetheless. And so how can we work together to ensure that that end goal comes? comes to pass a whole lot sooner than we can see. Protest is good. We have to do that because it brings attention to issues. I believe in protest and I support younger protesters. I've met, I've seen many of the younger people who are out there on the streets right now at this conference, um, and I support that. But if you don't connect your protest to politics, we miss the point. You must be proud of this second annual summit. Your thoughts on the attendees and what you've seen, the information that's been disseminated here tonight. I mean, it's been an incredible day to see. So the managing director of Rock Nation is this goddamn woman. <laughs> you see all them sisters, all them mammies, but this the woman in charge of it. Goddamn mulatto, man. Going hard. She go the hardest, man. So many people come out of all ages, and we had a great youth representation um, from across many boroughs and across the states. Um, we're really uh, super duper happy that um, that some, the topics like criminal justice reform has really um, attracted so many people because the desire to create change is really real, and it's necessary and it's urgent. And we had in this was two weeks ago. Okay, oh, I was just this wondering that was two weeks ago. They just don't get it. Incredible conversations on stage, and um, we feel really positive about it. What do you want the homework to be once they walk away from this summit? In Houston. What would you like to see many of the participants do once they leave here today? Feel absolutely inspired, not forget how they felt when they were here, 
in terms of uh, what they can do in their own communities, even starting at home, um, educating other family members who couldn't make it here, um, connecting with their friends, connecting with colleagues, and also with the plenty of organizations that we had here. We had over 61 organizations um, really dedicated to uh, social justice. And um, I just want everybody to come out of here feeling super empowered um, and really energized to make change. So Judge, you heard about the summit that we traveled to New York City, and a lot of people always attend. How do you keep the work going after that summit has ended in New York when you go back home to your respective communities? You know, we heard so much guff being given to President Obama. All these middle class Negroes. This is a retired judge right here. These are not thugs and hoodlums. These are our intelligentsia. This is the talented tenth going into Houston and demanding more social justice, more police reform, more criminal justice reform in the midst of what's happening in Houston with the judges and the, and the um, DAs. And, and they won't be able to connect the dots. Right, all of them will be shocked to hear about it and, and disbelieving that, you know, there's just like what we see every day. None of them see that. Right. They, they, they will return on, like, whenever they do, and they'll say, protect black women. Yep. What? Yep. And the fact that they want more is, is the crazy. The fact that they're not coming back and saying, we want to congratulate Houston. A lot of cities are still very racist and shit. Blah, blah, blah. But we want to congratulate Houston on what they're doing with criminal justice reform. They're the beacon and they're a uh, light at the end of the tunnel. They're the, they're the flagship city when it comes to criminal. Nah, they're coming back and asking for more. That's why I'm saying that, that woke shit, man, it never ends, man. They never stop. There's always going to be why, a lot of work to do. And that's why white people got to understand. They don't want equality. They don't want equity. They want domination. So they want family. everything. <laughs> they want they want That's supremacy. One. Yes, they want supremacy. They're projected when they call it white supremacy. They crave it. They obsess over it. They they want it so badly. And, and it's and it's the ones like this, the ones with the white wives or the white husbands, or the ones who got the white parent. They're the worst. I mean, you got, don't Absolutely. get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Big old sisters like this, they not, you know what I'm saying? Big old sisters like that, they. Yeah, they <laughs> they Look at this, another mulatto and shit. You got these, 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 these mulattoes is something else, man. Um, they, 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 they love this shit sisters and shit they love this shit this is their movement this gives them this is their way of um you know this is their this is their thing they they've taken ownership in this Let's see what this retired judge got to say. Powered um, and really energized to make change. So, Judge, you heard about the summit that we traveled to New York City, and a lot of people always attend. How do you keep the work going after that summit has ended in New York when you go back home to your respective communities? You know, we heard so much guff being given to President Obama when he said that he was a community organizer. But that's exactly what you need to carry the message forward. <laughs> Yeah. The message. Salute the strawberry wine, man. She says, Merry Christmas. Merry Malcolm Xmas. Salute to you, too. Shout out to Guy Ninja. Guy Ninja says, they let criminals go, except men who don't pay child support. Yeah, you, you don't pay your child support. Yeah, you ain't getting no bond. Um, shit. Well, I mean, look, that that's not true. Uh, you heard, Remember in California, the reparations? Where they want to have oh, the yeah. son man not pay reparate, not pay child support? Think yeah, about it. Man. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I'm telling you, man, it's just bizarro world.
whether it's from the right or the left, you need people organizing in the community to motivate voters to get out and do the work necessary to make the change they want to see in society. The call to they're calling for a change. Biden's in office. They um they run the media, they run everything. They the, the, the fucking squad is out there. They're winning. They're winning in a landslide, and they're the, and then they're acting like they're losing. And that's 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 uh, a coach told me that one time. He said he said he wanted us to play like like we we're, we're, we're down. Even when you're up, you play like you're down, so you keep that fire. You know what I'm saying? You don't get complacent. You play like you're losing. Even when you win, whether it's from the right or the left, you need people organizing in the community to motivate voters to get out and do the work necessary to make the change they want to see in society. The call to action is clear to take home the stories of resilience and the urgent need for reform to weave them into the fabric of our daily lives. Let the insights from the summit become a catalyst for tangible steps toward a more just society. You can find this special on YouTube, Fox Soul, and on Fox 26 